Welcome to Just Another Video Game Podcast. This is episode six. I'm your host, Jeremy Harvey. Joining me again, and this time with a slightly different title, my now co-host, Brian Auer. Oh, I thought you were going to say I was a creative fellow. You can be the creative fellow. Oh, I just want to have the same title as Miyamoto. Just Another Video Game Podcast <laughs> creative fellow, Brian Auer. Hi, how's it going? I'm doing pretty good. We're going to change up the format this time. We're still early enough that I think we can screw around with the formatting of this show. No, it's all canon now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Of our few listeners that we have right now, if you got a problem with us with that, let us know. You can uh, yeah, please, tweet at us. Yeah, su- subscribe and, and yell at us. Which I mean, anything will be fine. I've also just recently changed our Twitter. Oh, really? Uh, just because to have some uniformity to it. Because before it was just another VGP, mm-hmm. but on the Twitter page it said JAVG Podcast. So I've changed it to the Twitter handle is now JAVG Podcast. Okay. So now people can look at that and know, hey, that's a podcast, rather than it just being like, what is just nice. another VGP? And and uh, it's early enough that we're not going to you know split our our user base. Right. Well, anyone that was already <laughs> subscribed, they still stay subscribed. I didn't okay. have to open up a whole new thing. Okay. Just you can do that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, as long as it's available. I I don't know anything about Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> So, part of the change for this is we're not really going to necessarily focus on a single subject for the entire episode, because even in previous episodes, when we did focus on a single subject, we went off on tangents, we talked about a number of things. We're going to shoot for this to be a weekly show, talking about things that have happened in the past week, which is kind of what we did before, we just focused more so on a single topic that happened within the last two weeks or so. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely hard to keep me focused on any one thing, so. Yeah, this helps. So, uh, first off, uh, just want to get this out of the way. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is in pre-production again. Again. I was going to say, it was already kind of in pre-production for eight years. Yeah, just about. It, it seemed like at one point the game was canceled. But Ubisoft never admitted that. Yeah, they they uh, they're like no 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 it's not not actually canceled. Don't no we're still working on it. Which really was shitty for us fans. Like was it? to to just you know string us along with that stuff. It's great to hear that it's actually being worked on again. How far along that's gonna go? We're gonna wait another eight years for it. I don't know how far along is uh, Wild at this point. Um, it's been two years since they announced that. That was the other game that Michelle Ansel was working on as an independent yeah. from Ubisoft. He's he's off working on that somewhere else. But yeah, so they've announced that. And uh, they announced it, I believe it was through his Instagram. Um, <laughs> right after telling everyone, hey, you should subscribe to Michelle Ansel's Instagram. <laughs> and everyone's like, so beyond good and evil then? And yeah, it, that seemed to be the case. We got some concept art. Yeah. That the first one they put out, it, you see this bearded uh, mechanic looking guy with a little pig on him. A little pig with little baby human hands. Yeah. I mean, there's really nothing. If that was just a picture and it wasn't tied to Mr. Ansel and... At, you know, no Ubisoft connection or anything, you wouldn't be able to tell that it, that was Beyond Good and Evil. It looks like something that just came off of DeviantArt. And you're like, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I wonder what the story is behind that. <laughs> but later, he acknowledged that they are in pre-production, nothing else. There's still the rumor that it's going to be an NX exclusive. This could be something along the lines of what Nintendo did with Bayonetta 2, where that series was dead. And Nintendo fronted the money to bring it back as an exclusive. And and are people just saying that because uh, Yves Guimon is just all up the NX's uh, well, ass at this point? It, I mean, is that, that just people that, speculating that, that it's uh, exclusive? Or are we looking back at the Wii U early days where we're like, oh, they're making exclusive stuff for the Wii U? Well, no, this, this was broken by Let's Play Video Games. They put out... Actually, no. It was someone who currently works at Let's Play Video Games that she had released the rumor that was going around that it was going to be revived as an NX exclusive. That they were looking into putting out the money to produce it. 
the source in question, Laura K. Buzz, she's fairly reliable. Uh, she's broken some other rumors. She was the one that broke the PS4 Slim. Um, well, she didn't okay. break it. She was in she was in a, a scenario where she was able to get her hands on one, and she was the one that was willing to put out videos and all this stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, she's done some other rumors in the past. But yeah, the along with this... Um, Got the, a couple other pictures, too. There's a couple other pictures. I don't have them on here. There was one of a shark person and one of a rhino person. That, that was the key thing with Beyond Good and Evil, is that you had these humanoid animal hybrids characters. Uh, the rhino ones are like reggae rhinos that worked at a... Uh, they had their own workshop where they fixed hover cars called Mama Goes. Um, seriously, I saw, you need I saw his dreads. Yeah, you need to play this game. I like, really want to. Well, I, I, and I own it now. As I said before, I, I do own it. I'm just waiting to have uh, just an amount of time where I can actually consume myself with this game that I've always wanted to play. Well, what I'd, I, I would love to do this. I, I You know, you don't have to give me too many reasons to go back and play it again. We could do like sort of a book club kind of thing. Oh. Do, do some episodes talking about it. I would love to do that. I am. I'm, I'm okay with that. All right. So listeners, maybe that'll be something down the line. If there's a, if we get a, a, a dry week of news, we might do something like that. Also, if you haven't played it, you can get the game for free right now on Uplay on PC. So if you have a PC that can play a 10-year-old game, <laughs> you really don't have an excuse to not play this it's game. Tall order. Yeah. <laughs> That's really all for that, really. Okay. So, um, um, well, let's, 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 let's go back. So we haven't, we haven't uh, talked in about two weeks. What have you been up to, Brian? Uh, Playing the games? I made a bunch of Mario Maker levels. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually beat, um, what is it, Expert Mode for the first time? Yeah. 100, 100 Mario Challenge. Uh, finally just bashed my head against that. And I did so many and... skips when I tried that, and I just I never completed it. <laughs> uh, I ended up just being able to find enough levels that could get through in about like five to seven lives and get three lives back at the end and, and made it through with like 40 lives to spare. I was quite proud of myself. Did you know that that unlocks extreme mode? No, I didn't. Yes. I think that was the thing that they added. I think they patched that in later. Okay. Uh, well, extreme mode. I could um, be completely wrong. It, it unlocks a six level hundred live challenge. Which I'm like, all right, well, uh, these are going to be really hard, but perhaps I can get through some of them. Right. Um, the first level, it went pretty much uh, die. <laughs> or uh, or if that didn't happen, it was move, then jump, then die. <laughs> so uh, I didn't get very far on that first one. I ended up skipping it. Uh, it was like this staircase made out of bullet bills that shot cheap cheeps. And there was a pipe that was shooting bad guys at me from behind. And then a spiky ceiling that, that was very, very close to my head. I'm not quite sure how I was supposed to get out of that. The next level I played uh, was a bunch of bullshit at the beginning. But uh, the end was basically... And 50 seconds to get through it, I think. Oh, okay. And the end was a quick uh, spiked maze with a star at the beginning. So you have to, and the maze was such that you had to execute it perfectly. There were a few jumps that like you had to just sail through as tiny Mario. You had to be tiny to get through. I mean, you can duck and that's fine, but you they wanted you to be tiny to get through some of these holes. Um, but I was doing in such a way that there was a Lakitu earlier in the level that, okay, if I kill him, I can book it across the first half of the level and keep my mushroom, and try and slide underneath the block to release the star, and then <laughs> fly further into the maze, right where the maze starts, because this whole run-up of spike, uh, like spiked floor, and then right as my cloud runs out, I drop onto the star, and I see if I can beat the maze that way, and I almost did, and at that point, I was like, well, I just played through a bunch of really hard levels, and I gave these two a shot. I'm going to take a break for a day, and then I never went back to it. Right. But, what, uh, what was that mod thing? Kaizo Mario? Kai, that... Kaizuo Mario, yeah. Yeah. Those like, are the uh, ridiculous... These uh, seem more nefarious than that. Yeah. It's where, like, my uh, my little brother's levels go to live. He, 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 he... 
he likes to skip levels and get very angry, but then when he makes them, they are ridiculously hard levels, and he's just like, what? They have to get through this. And it's like, you, you realize just the, the absolute paradox of what you're doing, right? And he's like, no, no. That was one problem that I had with Super Mario Maker. I loved that game. I wanted to make fun levels, but all I could make were either way too easy or way too hard levels. Mm -hmm. It, you, I couldn't find a medium, and it was one of the things. I made five or six. I had one featured on Game Explain. It, oh, okay. got, it got me some views on there. It was more of a puzzle level. That that was where I really enjoyed doing stuff, was mm -hmm. finding ways. This was before they added the keys yes. and all of those things where you had to come up with creative ways to hide things, to keep things going and all that. You know, have it where you have a hidden block somewhere where there's a vine, but if you pay attention to the background, you can see where I'm kind of pointing you in a direction. That one I was really happy with, but when I tried to make a straight out platforming level, I was never satisfied with the stuff I made. Yeah, it's really tough. Turns out uh, some really brilliant people make those Mario games. Yeah. Um, and and <laughs> it's fun playing through people's levels. It's fun making our own. Um, I like to make little vignettes and just try and make them as hilarious as possible but yeah it's actually tough to nail down a good level I, I i did make i am proud of a uh a ghost house level that i made before invisible power doors mm -hmm. and uh stuff like that i i had to it was like a mario world you know well, ghost house style level so i don't know i i really love that game i just don't play it as much as i used to yeah anything else um, a lot of Forza Horizon. Yes, uh, that came out. Not three. I wish. Yeah, I had I've a been way playing play. three. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, uh, but yeah, Forza Horizon was free with games with gold, and I've been playing a lot of that. It's a um, gorgeous game. Even it's for the time. Really fun. I am a big fan of Forza. For most of my life, was more of an arcade racer. Right. Sim racing sims were not my bag. I didn't really enjoy them. No um, Gran Turismo. No, because I just couldn't. I didn't have the patience to like bash my head against it and figure it all out. Uh, I'm more of like a Sega Rally or a San Francisco Rush or like actually in the arcades playing a uh, a racing game. Like because I used to try and play old like Indy 500 or F1 PC games with my dad but the second you touch a wall you're done for the race and that always frustrated me isn't that rewind feature great that rewind feature is what does it yeah that's what got me playing uh, I think Forza 3 was the first one I played and my friend and I played that for hours and it actually taught me how to play a racing sim properly right and slowly turning off each assist as I got more comfortable with you know did no anti-lock brakes or no driving line or things like that. Did you do much of the rivals? That was always my favorite thing to do in those. I have to pay for it. And Forza Horizon, the rivals uh, DLC is paid DLC, and I don't. Oh, well, I meant I meant in the uh, or Forza Motorsports Three. Did you uh, do the rival stuff on there? No, I did not know that existed in three. Uh, I'm pretty sure because that was the 360 one, right? Yes. That was the that was the Top Gear one. That was the uh, no. That was the one that was bundled in with ODST. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of four because I think the one that got me into motorsports for or Forza in general was the one that they introduced the Top Gear stuff. Do you are you familiar with Top Gear? Yes, uh, uh, very familiar with that. And uh, you know they have their new show coming up in a month. Uh, that they it's Grand called something Tour. else. Grand yes, Tour. Uh, I I. I'm willing to check that out. I've like got a trailer clowns. out. It's it's amazing. I like those clowns. Yeah, me too. But yeah, that was the thing that got me into there, and I love doing the rival stuff because it was just best lap. You would do one lap around a thing, and you would I would spend so much time on a single track doing one lap and just trying to perfect it every time, hitting every turn just right. And then you send that to your friends. It would or? be you could do with friends. You could find it would find people that were that were close to your time you'd start off with a really bad time someone used a lot of assists someone did a lot of rewind if you could beat if you could just beat the lap without using rewind you would jump up really high okay. you'd go on to basically the next tier like that that was how they were you basically have a clean lap and a dirty lap that sounds cool and yeah and they have that with uh horizon 3 but um that was one of my favorite things to do and no other racing game would hook me like that. It's staying on one lap and just trying to perfect that one run. 
Yeah, um, that's the crazy thing about Forza is it feels so good when you nail a turn yeah. and and you're not using the rewind or anything like that. Like when you stick something and you get a little bit of that uh, oversteer and just a little bit of a slide and and uh, it feels it feels great. Uh, I love driving around that that uh, map. Uh, I hear the 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 map in three is really fun to drive around. But, so uh, with all the Forza games, I've played. Forza, I guess Forza 4 was the one with the Top Gear stuff. I played a lot of that. I played Forza 5, which I think was the Xbox One launch one. Maybe maybe there was one that was in between that. Uh, 5 is the, the first Drive Avatar one, right? Uh, yeah, and that was the first Xbox one. Well, that was Xbox One launch. I played a lot of that one. Okay. Yeah. I didn't play Horizon 2, and I didn't play 6, a Motorsport 6. I hear you're not missing but, much. Yeah. Uh, that, some water physics yeah, but whenever I played those previous ones, I always played in first person. Mm-hmm. I loved the cockpit view, the detail inside of the cars, and I just loved doing that. With Horizon 3, I have to do it in third person because that game is gorgeous. Really? It's distracting just how beautiful that <laughs> map is. Like, and just seeing everything around you, there's a lot of races that you can do. You have races that go on a track and you have to hit these checkpoints. You have to go in between these checkpoints. But... You have races every once in a while where it's just sort of like get to this point however possible. And you can drive through these forests and it's like I can't do that in first person because I've got to be able to see everything around me. But it's still just an amazing game to look at. I've never been uh, a first person driving player because I just I feel boxed in and I want to see as much as I can of the track. and. Sure. and be able to see like what's coming and who's around me and stuff like that. Yeah, no. Um, I uh, that's uh, I, I really want to play three. I really do. Come on over. Okay, I should. <laughs> I should do that. Um, actually, I got uh, three because of a. I, I was iffy on one if I wanted to get it or not. Uh, you know, I saw these amazing reviews your, that reviews for it, but I was just like, uh, I don't know if I want to drop sixty dollars on it right now. Maybe I'll wait till it gets cheaper. Fortunately. Target's online store had an error that like three or four days after the game released, they were selling it for $20 digitally. And uh, it, it was only going on for a couple hours that this this issue was happening on I never run into those kinds of things. It's, uh, uh I'll, I'll, I'll sh- tell you about some of the people you should follow on Twitter. Okay. That's, that's how I get my information. Okay. That's how All I'm right. able to jump onto those God, things. Damn it, I have to get on Twitter, don't I? Yeah. You can just do. You can follow a couple people. At Luigi's alarms, apartment. And we'll keep on there. I do have. I do have one for my streaming thing that I never uh, update. So, uh, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Anything else? Um. Oh. Uh, what was the uh, the the games with gold for this half of the month? It's. Uh, ATV, motocross, oh sure, yeah, something or other. Uh, that game is hot garbage. That's what I hear. I hear that. <laughs> I heard is. that the like older games, like PS2 era versions of those, were great. Yeah, and then they just got really bad. It's a, it's a, it was really bad. I played about two races of it, and and uh, switched back over to Forza Horizon. Yeah, of course. and uh, did and hunted down all of the uh, speed trap cameras that my friend had beaten the day before and crushed all of those and then uh, what about my day nice well for me yeah i've been playing a lot of horizon 3 um like i said the game is gorgeous i don't know what they had in horizon 2 i'm going from the first horizon to horizon 3 one of my favorite things about it is just playing around on the map which they have it in horizon 1 where you can just screw around and you get like skill points and stuff like yes. that that you can uh, you can level up and you can get things that way they really make it so much fun to do that because they have this thing on the radio, which I don't know about you, but I love the radio in Horizon 1. The station, the DJs, the way that they talked about what was going on, it felt really natural. Uh, hold well, we on, got, we got a, a cat scratch. There's a here. cat either trying, I think there's one trying to get in and one trying to get out. Yeah, that's how. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yes, Oliver, I know. We've decided to add a, a pet. Now we have well, two, two pets have, which one? to the podcast. Okay, in or out? We can have two, it's fine. All right. Uh, this door is shutting, so just so you know, you guys can't be. <laughs> uh, my cats are assholes. But they um, they have these things on the radio that they do every once in a while called skill songs, where the DJ will say, 
was like, all right, drivers, uh, this next song is a skill song. And for the t- for the time of that song, you get double skill points. Oh, that's cool. So suddenly I'll be, I'll set a place on the map where I'm like, I'm going to go here. I'm going to do these races. I'm driving. Then the person on the station is just like, skill song. And suddenly I'm just, I'm like, okay, got to stop everything. Got to drift around these corners. Got to ride over everything. Got to clip every car that comes near me. Yeah. And it's just so much fun. That's that's really cool. Yeah, it's it's a great game. Honestly, it's one of the best racing games I've ever played. It it handles perfect, uh, near perfect, like almost all of the Forza games have been recently. Uh, the music's great. A lot of uh, varied selection of songs on there. The cars they have, you know, the fastest cars in the world. They also have some of the hi cat. Hi, they also have some of the dumbest cars. Like, you know, you have your little three-wheeled mini cars that can only go like 40 miles an hour max, which I got one of those as a joke. I'm like, oh, yes, I have to get that and have like a Deadpool uh, theme um, skin for it. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. I get out of the area. I start driving. I get like not even a mile away from it. I'm like, nope, I got to turn around. (laughs) I cannot do this. Does it tip over if you turn too sharply? I ha- I didn't haven't played around with it that much. Okay. There are races that you can find. You know, you know they have all different types of races where you yes. can do lower class ones. I'll, I'm gonna find some at some point that they're gonna use. You're gonna those. Find an F class somewhere. Right. right. Uh, also been playing a lot of Picross 3D Round Two. Okay. Do you need the A button for that game? No. Okay. Good. Then I can play it. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> touch screen and the D pad. Okay. Cool. Um, I really want to play Picross or that that one. I haven't. I have not played a Picross in a long time. Have you played the three D one? No. Okay, the three D one's completely different, but it is still just as fun. It's it's better than I than regular two D Picross. They the rules are changed because rather than it being black and white, either a dot is filled in or it isn't. You have two different colors, and there are blue and orange. Blue, when you fill in that cube, will stay a solid cube. It'll stay a square cube. Orange ones, when you fill those in and you fill an entire row in, it will change. The shape of it will change and it turns into this other thing. So you're not getting, you know, you're not, when it finishes, you're not getting this weird blocky image. You're getting this thing with more shapes and curves to it. Okay. And the game's $30, digital only, but there's like 300 puzzles on there. You can also start the game on hard, which is amazing for a veteran like me because I hated going through tutorials. And you get more points that way, right? Yeah, you, they, they do it where you have basically gems that you earn based on how well you did. And, you know, you have the highest rated gems. I don't move on from a puzzle until I get a perfect. Okay. Like that's that's just how I play. <laughs> I'm on like 120. I do it like every night. I go through like five or six puzzles. Uh, they have amiibo compatibility. That's right. You have some amiibos. Special so amiibo uh, puzzles. There's nine or ten. I believe it's nine. I saw a thing that said ten. I've got almost all amiibos, and I tried to scan all the ones that they said, but I've only come up with nine. So I'm like, either they're wrong or something's messed up in this game. Because I did all the nine puzzles, and it was like, complete. So like, I have to assume nine. it was just nine. Yeah, it, it, it's a shame. It, like, uh, It'd be nice if they added more in there it'd be nice if they had uh, we don't need to get into an amiibo conversation yeah it'd be nice if they did more with amiibos but an x man yeah i assume that they will keep that around there's no way they can ditch it they know that people want them they can do good things with them they just haven't we just have to wait yeah just playing okay. the waiting game. That's that's Nintendo right now, playing the waiting game. Apparently. Uh, I was well, hoping we would have had our, our NX discussion by now. Or our real NX reveal discussion by now. But yeah, uh, no, I mean, that's not the case. Hopefully by the end of October. Otherwise, what the hell are they doing? Nah, Nintendo don't. likes to wait. They've always done that. They've had no problem delaying talking about something. They've had no problem pretending something doesn't exist. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else like is talking about it. Like the internet? Yeah, like the internet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speaking of Nintendo, uh, there's a new Paper Mario game that just came out. Are you interested yeah. in that at all? Uh, I've heard disappointing things about it. I've, I've heard, heard mixed. I, I've heard that the battle system is annoying as hell. Did you play Sticker Star? I did not. Okay. it's From what I've heard, it's a lot like Sticker Star. It's better than Sticker Star, but it's still in the same vein as Sticker Star, which Sticker Star's battle was 
horrible. And it still relies on items, yeah. uh, collectible things to do your battle for you. Uh, I also hear for uh, completionists out there that you can 100% uh, yeah, color yeah. in levels and then uh, that's done, move on, and there are a chance that a Shy Guy or a Magic Koopa or something will come back and suck all the color out of completed areas, which just sounds like a just a nightmare for someone who, like, usually when I play those kinds of games, I, I want to complete everything. Uh, it takes me forever to get through a Mario and Luigi game because I go to every single corner of every single area to find every single thing. Right. I haven't played a Paper Mario game ever, actually. You've never played Paper Mario? I did not play 64 or Thousand Year Door. Oh, man. I, you, I, you were... It's really hard to find Thousand Year Door. Uh, 64 is on Virtual Console. Yeah. And amazing game. If you like the turn-based role-playing games, it's... I mean, uh, Thousand, Do Thousand Year Door is definitely better than the original, but even the original is a classic. Okay. Uh, um, I've, I've played uh, RPG, I've played the Mario and Luigi games uh, up until... I did not play the most recent one, but I played all of the Mario and Luigi games. I heard that one wasn't very good. Yeah, Dream Team kind of turned me off. I spent way too long on that game. I never finished that one. I finished all of the ones up until that one, and I just lost... I mean, Bowser's Inside Story was great. It was really fun. Uh, I think the problem is that I haven't liked any of them as much as the first one. Sure, yeah. And I stuck it out through three more, and I'm just like... I When that the new one came out with the... What is it? The, the crossover kind of one. I just... Paper Jam. Paper Jam. Yeah. I, I did not give it a shot, so... Right. No, definitely give the original Paper Mario. I, I've I've always wanted to play it. I, I, I Super should. Paper Mario is pretty good too. It's it's more of an action. I own it actually. But you haven't played it. I have. Okay. Uh, I got it. I had to when I got my Wii. Uh, I got it launch night, and then I needed rent money, and my roommate was going to kick me out, so I had to sell my Wii, and then. Three months later, I bought a Wii back off of uh, Craigslist, and it came, one of the games he gave me was that. And uh, I played it for a little while, and was like, this is weird and kind of fun, but every time I try, I would try to go back to it, I just would forget where I was, and, and uh, it was a little bit uh, confusing, so I just never really finished it. Um, yeah, I mean, all of the Paper Mario games, on a side, I can't say anything about the new one, uh, Sticker Star on 3DS, you can skip that one, but honestly, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, and Super Paper Mario, good games. Pa Super Paper Mario, different, a lot of people didn't care for it because it really did ditch the RPG mechanics. Mm -hmm. They had RPG stuff in that you gained experience points, you could level up, you could earn learn abilities, but it was a platformer. I thought a lot of the character design was a little uninspired, too. They were just like little squiggly geometric bad guys. And... Yeah, so yeah, in, in Super Paper Mario, yeah, they did a weird thing where it was just like, well, we're not going to worry about actually creating characters, we're just going to do shapes. Yeah. And I, I can understand that. Um, On Nintendo, I expect more from you. Right now, I don't. I mean, like <laughs> I said, it's just the waiting game. The only thing I'm expecting from them is to say something. Yes. Please say something. Let's... And not about Dragon Quest Seven, which... You know, hey. I'm I'm interested in that one. There's just too many other games right now. I'm not saying it's going to be bad about Dragon back Quest Seven. It's just not what I want to hear from them right now. Right. <laughs> uh, last little Nintendo related things, and then we'll uh, move away from Nintendo. I'm sure none of you have heard about this, but the <laughs> the Icoon Morphus X300 gaming tablet. Tell me more. It is a tablet that has detachable controllers on both sides that can be hooked up to your TV where those detachable controllers can be used to play on that TV. Does that sound familiar? I think I've heard of this before. This is crazy. This is this is insane. <laughs> because, first off, this was announced a year ago before all the rumors about the NX were going around. We yeah. knew NX. We didn't know anything about NX. There were talks about it being a... A hybrid between console and handheld mm -hmm. but that was it and then you have this thing here that it's like they have images i believe it's coming out next year um i've got my web browser is going real slow right now so i can't really read much but i'll put some pictures on the youtube video for this but it looks exactly like what they've been talking what about we're expecting what, yeah what, what what has been rumored about the nx and i was thinking about this 
looking back on Wii and Wii U and the things that they did, looking back at the 3DS, 2D or the original DS, that was something different. Mm -hmm. Dual screen, one of them being touch screen. We haven't seen anything like that before. But three glasses free 3D technology that existed before the 3DS. The motion controls, single hand remote style existed before the Wii. I was able to buy a 3D mouse that you could use on your computer that you could hold in your hand. I that forgot about those. They were crappy, mm-hmm. um, but it did a similar thing to what that did. The Wii U, we already had, what is it, uh, Apple Air TV where you could use your iPad with your Apple TV or something like that, that you could have, you could control stuff like that. We've had all this. And it makes me think that this is them looking at other technologies and saying, this isn't really big right now, but we think we can go a direction with it. And I think that this adds to that because it's contrary to what a lot of people may think about Nintendo and how they introduce these things. It wasn't necessarily original for them. Mm -hmm. It was a different direction for gaming for what we know as mainstream gaming for them to go in these directions. But it wasn't original technology. They were looking at things that already existed and making it their own. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm seeing this and it's just like, yeah, that's what the NX is going to be. Because that, like, this fits with all the rumors we've heard. And thinking back on that, that would just make sense. To me, at least. I could be completely wrong. You know, we'll get the NX and it's just a PS4. (laughs) And then they're going to have their own little handheld. It'll be the 4DS. Uh, Yeah, no, the thing looks really weird. I think it's hilarious. And I'm not quite sure what to make of it until uh, my uncle who works at Nintendo tells me what to think about it. Your uncle works at Nintendo, too? Yeah, yeah, he totally does. So many uncles there. Yeah, Metroid, man. It's coming. So, moving away from Nintendo... Finally, anyone listening to this show should know by now that when you have Brian and myself in a room, we're going to talk Nintendo Uh, at some point. Yeah. We really can't help it. We Uh, play everything, but we we like Nintendo. I I like Sega. I'm just not going to talk a lot about it. Sorry. (laughs) This week, reviews came out for the PSVR. Uh, It's the most comfortable VR headset. Right. I've I've played a few games on PSVR. Okay. I think it's great. I think that the in two years we're going to have a newer version of it, a better version of Probably. it. Probably. Because there are problems with it. It's... Problems, you say? Yeah. I mean, okay, here, here's my very first experience with PSVR. I played Super Hypercube, which I love. Easily, when I do get a PSVR, I might get one in the next couple months if I can get a hold of one. I'm not in a rush right now because there's just not enough games for it I'm, i would have to drop 500 dollars on stock it. is probably sold out at this point right but then you know maybe some people cancel spoken for yeah maybe some people canceled even when it does finally release how many people are really going to be picking it up mm. how quickly am i going to be able to get a second hand one some people might get it decide they don't like it sell it back um there's always ebay yeah but when uh i played the game for those that don't know, Super Hypercube is like a first-person Tetris. Yes. You're like rotating this block to fit through a little hole in the wall. And you could easily have games like that. There have been games like that. There's a game called Quetzal's Corridors on the 3DS that is like that. But with Super Hypercube, at eventually the shape that you're rotating gets so big that you cannot see around it you by just staring at it. You have to use the headset to look around it as if the object was floating right in front oh, of you. Cool. To see the hole in the distance to try to figure it out. So much fun. Music's great. It, it's got this really good electronic uh, beat that goes along with what you're doing. When I first took the headset off after doing it, I felt like I had a couple drinks. Like I felt, I felt buzzed. Because <laughs> it was like, imagine wearing glasses, taking those glasses off, and suddenly you're in a different place. Yeah. It's I, disorienting. I've heard that from a lot of different people. Yeah. That, that same kind of... Uh, phenomenon or feeling and one of my biggest issues with vr that i just don't think we're there yet and that's what makes me hesitant is the fact that when you put these headsets on you are looking through goggles you're not it it isn't a complete visual cover Mm. you're looking through lenses and there's a screen on the other side it's a limited scope it's a limited scope and when you're doing that, when you first put it on, you can't help but realize you're looking at two circles in front of your eyes, but if a game is good enough, your eyes will sort of 
focus through that and you'll lock on. It's like when you're reading something from a distance okay. sort of thing. Your eyes have to focus into it and then you can like be locked onto that. But then when you pull away, sometimes your eyes take a second to adjust sort of thing. That's the feeling that I got with it. I don't, I didn't really get nauseous. I know that's a, it's not really common, but it's something that people have. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. my thing with the focusing in and then taking the headset off and being a little woo, I, I think that's a pretty common thing. I think, and I think it was a lot more common. Uh, we were hearing that from people who, whose job it is to kind of cover this stuff. And in the earlier days of VR, that was a lot more common because as they were trying to figure the exact kind of frame rate you need to have in order to keep people from getting that weird motion sickness. Right. I think they're getting a lot better about it now. Um, it sounds like there are standards in place. So I, I love VR. I love the idea of VR. Actually, it, it's kind of interesting. I just recently started listening to the audiobook of Ready Player One. Have you read that? No, I have not. In that, it does circle around a virtual reality unit that is like super advanced. It's like an alternate history where... In the 90s, someone introduced a virtual reality system that was, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of what we have right now. Or what we had back then. And what we had back then. <laughs> it was, They describe it as like sort of swimmer's goggles that project the image onto your eyes. You use these gloves that have like haptic feedback so you can feel things. We, I've seen technology like that proposed for VR. We're not there yet. Nope. But that's what got me thinking that we have this, we actually, we have three major, I would say three deluxe versions of VR right now with PSVR, Oculus, and Vive. There are lower end ones with the Gear VR with Google Cardboard, uh, and then you can get just cases for your phones that do basically what Google Cardboard and the Gear VR do. But even with these deluxe units, we're not there yet. We're still nowhere near that. And that's what makes me hesitant to jump in. I was all for it until, until I started reading this book. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, maybe I should wait a couple years because we're going to get better versions of this. The games I find very interesting. I love motion gaming, and this is an extension of that. It gives you the ability to do motion gaming in more 3D sort of sense where you feel like you're in the middle of it rather than moving your hands to adjust something on a 2D screen yeah. sort of thing. How do you feel about VR? Um, I feel like in some ways we're starting over again yeah. with video games because uh, a lot of what I've seen so far are just three-dimensional uh, Pong games. They're almost tech demos. That's really all we have. Yeah. Um, the most interesting things that happen in VR are things that aren't considered games. Uh, there's some really cool stuff coming. I think Farpoint looks cool. Uh, uh, Robo Recall looks hilarious. Um, do you know and... about... Um... The job simulator job Have simulator i really want to play job simulator so do i i have a friend who uh, worked on job simulator oh actually. really cool um yeah he was actually uh at the uh, uh oculus connect uh event uh, hmm. he took a picture of zuckerberg i saw it on his facebook <laughs> nice Haha. but yeah i um i don't know i think we're I mean, we're, we're getting there. I'm just not quite sure if we're ready to be playing. I don't know if it's going to be a gaming thing. Like, it's, exclu it's not, it, it shouldn't be an exclusively gaming thing, I don't think. Right. You have you have things that you can watch movies on. Uh, you can watch YouTube stuff. They have, like, 3D YouTube stuff that you can and, do. And that's fine, too. Um, I don't know. I think VR can be something so much more special if they just get it figured out um i mean speaking of the uh oculus connect uh i watched all of that last night was um, palmer lucky there palmer lucky was not there hmm. i wonder why hmm. um you know i don't want to get too much into what he's what he was no, up to no, everyone and knows all about it really that. doesn't matter um rich people can do whatever they want with their money but um, i will just say real quick because of him super hypercube won't be on the oculus it, and that's going to keep me from getting an oculus that's and that's very sad like i said while rich people can do whatever they want with their money um <laughs> that like was, vr that seemed to be a really stupid thing to do with your money uh everyone knows that you can produce memes for no money at all uh and shit post and i you know i i can't remember exactly how much they said he gave but um i'm pretty sure a billboard over, does not 10, the, over ten thousand dollars yeah it was like twenty thousand dollars um 
You said we weren't going to talk buy about a, it. To buy a billboard, I guess. I don't know. I um, will just say my biggest issue with It was this, stupid. That's all I'm going to say. My biggest issue with the whole Palmer Lucky thing, this is really all I have to say, regardless of who you're going to vote for, I'm not talking about any of that. The fact that he admitted to it and then denied it and yeah. then admitted to it and then denied it and just wouldn't come forward and he could just be like, hey, yeah, I'm a Trump supporter, all that. I'm doing all this stuff for Trump. But he went and said, like, oh, no, everyone knows I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson. It's like, just just be honest and we can move on. It's like he hasn't figured out that people are paying attention to him now. Yeah. And that he's under scrutiny and that he is the face of this thing that he built but is not really in charge of anymore. Yeah, they didn't trot him out. Uh, I think they said that it was his decision not to be there. Smart decision. Who knows whether or not that's true. Um, But I will say that I walked away from that whole uh, keynote way more excited than I was before. Uh, I think we were talking about this earlier today um, when I just kind of mentioned offhand that like um, it just it seems like the way that Oculus is approaching or the, the, the company Oculus is approaching VR is more of a platform than just a device or an experience or a medium through which to play a game. Um, they're thinking, it seems like some of the people who are in charge have been thinking about VR for a long time. And I know that's true with, uh, you know, they've got John Carmack on board. Right. They've got um, his buddy Mark Abarth as uh, their head scientist. Uh, by the way, if you watch anything from that keynote, the last half hour of Mark Abarth uh, talking about where he sees this stuff going is extremely interesting. It's, uh, he gets up and basically says, I don't really want to, uh, uh, quotes a lot of science fiction uh, writers and authors, uh, but says, I, I don't want, if you're making a prediction, don't be specific. Um, I'm going to go ahead and be specific. Here's what I think the next five years, where we could be. And uh, lays it all out very clinically. Um, he is a programmer and an engineer and a scientist. And uh, so it is very clinical, but it's super interesting to listen to someone who's been thinking about this for two decades, VR, yeah. and to see where he, uh, where he sees it going and his thoughts on it. And that sounds a lot better than sort of what Sony's doing right now, where they're just sort of... If I've read in interviews where they're asking about iterative, iterative, uh, iterative versions of the PSVR, and they're just like, we don't want to talk about that right now. But Oculus is admitting this is something that's going to morph and evolve. Yes. And, of course, that makes me not want to buy in right now. <laughs> that just makes me think, I don't want to get your beta version of this, yeah. even though you've had multiple beta versions. Like, I played Oculus two years ago, mm-hmm. and it was really bad it was like looking through google cardboard it was just you know real basic sort of thing and then i played with one earlier last year and or no this year it was earlier this year and it was so much different and it it, the motion tracking was so much better um when i first did it a few years ago i had this weird motion wristband thing that it was like another prototype thing it was real basic you just basically twisted your wrist around the control it didn't feel fluid it didn't feel like you were really controlling it it was just sort of like it was like the we waggle instead of just pressing a button it was, okay. it was unnecessary kind of thing um the 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 touch controllers you can tell they thought long and hard about those because they look like the best ones um they look nice they look the vibe ones just seem a little awkward to me uh playstation of course is using their move controllers again uh their ice cream cones they don't look weird uh, and that they don't like stick out or they don't like feel like they're Wii motes. Um, they look natural in your hand when, when they were holding them. They just felt like they fit your hand. Oculus Social VR, uh, which is something they showed off, which is just a way to meet and hang out with other people and do all sorts of different stuff, uh, like be on Google uh, Video mess or not Google, uh, Facebook Video Messenger with your wife while you're in your social VR avatar and grabbing a virtual selfie stick and taking a picture of your avatar, your wife's uh, 2D video, 
and your dog sitting on your couch on a feed. It's really weird and it's strangely compelling. Like I want them to do more. I want them to keep going. I want to see where they take it. Yeah, Um, because that description there does sound a lot like the VR system in Ready Player One. It's sounding more because in Ready Player One, it's like a VR that goes into a second life. Yeah. That you have this whole other world that you have your character that you play as and people talk to each other as their avatars sort of thing. And that does sound like a lot what what you're describing. Uh your your their avatars are also expressive when they're surprised like you can like they are tracking your eye movement in such a way and uh the controllers themselves have more than just movement sensors. They like I think they have a uh, gripping sensors they can tell like when you're gesturing a little bit is this ring on here does are there sensors in that ring i'm not sure i do not know how the controllers work they did not talk much about how they worked uh they just kind of used them a lot and uh gestured with them um because it looked to me like i mean when i first saw it like because they were showing these types of controllers what was it last year when they were doing that, they were talking about how they're working on the a Connect Two controller for it or something like that. Yeah, like we knew this was in the works. They just said it's not ready yet, and like like I was saying, you can tell they put a lot of thought into this thing. Yeah, I wasn't it sure. It looks comfortable. Yeah, it looks natural. I wasn't sure if there was like because there's a ring that goes around your hand in the controller, sort of thing. Not totally around it, around like your your index and your ring finger sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't sure if there were like, if it could detect finger motion. It seems like, like it that. can in, in some ways. Um, or it could be sensors on the outside that the, the room sensor can detect. It I, yeah. I'm not sure if that maybe that is a room sensor thing, which they are putting in room scale. Um, you can add a third sensor and uh, kind of have a vibe like experience where you are, uh, you know, a, a setting in, in your room that's what kills me about the psvr is they don't have something like that you have to be facing your tv or your camera that's not what they're going for they're going for a a cheap affordable experience yeah um which is smart for them to do um they already have an install base um why push it any further than they need to uh, as far as price uh they're going to keep that thing cheap and effective yeah and it was another thing that we were talking about earlier that when I was bringing up the whole thing of how Oculus would be like the middle between PSVR and the Vive, but with these controllers, it's the same price as Vive. Yes, it is. Uh, if, you, if you want a Vive, you can have a Vive experience on Oculus. If you want to, it will cost the same. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like they have they have minimum specs now, which I'm not sure if. Uh, it is cheaper on the ground level to build a PC that will run Oculus than it is for Vive. Now, I looked it up to buy a bundle of Oculus with a PC that is ready for it. This doesn't include the controllers, but we'll throw them, I'll add in the extra $200. What I found without them, the cheapest I could find is about $1,400 with a PC. So you oh. get the PC, you get well, the control, or you get the PC, you get the visor, you get a Xbox One controller, and you get one sensor. So add another two hundred dollars onto that with the controller. So you're looking at about sixteen hundred dollars is the lowest I could find as a bundle. Uh, they mentioned a PC that was five hundred dollars for the PC alone uh, to get into it, and uh, the the Oculus itself costs how much? It's six hundred dollars. Okay. And that includes an Xbox One controller. And then. And the sensor. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're about you're about fourteen hundred bucks at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's still very expensive. It's still luxury. That's why we're not there yet. No, no, and I'm you know nowhere close to buying one of these. Um, I may get a VR just because it's the cheapest thing. There's a lot of games out there. I want to play the Batman game, even though I know it's only like 45 minutes long. Yeah. I want to play Job Simulator, even though I know it's I the worst really version of it. I really want to play Job Simulator. Yeah, I saw I saw one guy playing on uh, one of the uh, feeds that I watch and. It was his first time getting into it, and everything looked so natural. He picked up a donut, put the sensor right up to his mouth, and his character just started eating it. Yeah. It's like it just was all natural. I'm like, I want to play this. Yeah, and you can just photocopy so anything silly. you want. Yeah, and, and uh, eat bad donuts and vomit everywhere. So, I mean, what, what else you got on your uh, list uh, there? They like to use the term judder and juddering. Apparently, that's their favorite new term for dipping frame rates. Uh, oh, yeah. It just, just kept 
that that was uh, it, over the course of the two hours uh, uh, that I watched. Uh, that seemed to be their favorite phrase for that. So with that, in for Sony and the PSVR, they have mandated that all games must run at solid sixty frames per second because. If you dip under that, if you have anything like that, it can screw up the experience. It can make you nauseous. With Oculus, they have their own platform that they could regulate that. With Vive, they're using the Steam platform, which we've seen. If you look at the Steam platform, anyone can throw any junk at Steam right now. Yeah, it's, it's the wild, wild west, it seems, of uh, VR. Uh, it's completely open to whatever you want to do. Uh, it's going to... Uh, you're gonna need to pay real close attention to those. Um, I don't know where you're going. Steam reviews. I was gonna say Steam reviews or curator, the whatever the curator thing is. Oh yeah, sure, your curated you're, content. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're gonna need to pay real close attention to those Steam reviews and that curated uh, content. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. No. Uh, going back to frame rate, um, Oculus has a standard. 90 frames per second. Oh, fancy. That is the first I have heard of that. Uh, I didn't know if anyone else was using that, but it seems that they want people running 90 frames per second on everything. Um, the way that they are uh, doing this in two different ways. All right, Kitty. Kit. Stop. Claw you're, you don't even want to leave. You're just laying by the door and clawing at it like an asshole. <laughs> God damn it. Cost of having animals on the show. I guess so. The way they're going about doing this, though, is, um... Uh... Go ahead. I'm going to open the door let him out. There we go. Bye, Jack. Anyway. Um, yeah, the way they're going about doing this, uh, two different ways. Um, first, for what you're viewing, I think it's the background, is asynchronous time warp is what they're calling it. <laughs> Okay. Um, it sounds stupid because it, it, it does sound stupid. That's why it sounds stupid. Um, but what it is is, is they are, uh, as you, the frames go along, and this is the, the background or whatever you're looking at. As the frames go along, should a frame drop, they will fake a frame and generate one. Wow. So it will, and it will put that in there so you don't lose a frame. Going to movement, like turn, like, you know, moving yourself, turning your hands, anything like that is a whole nother game. And they're calling it asynchronous space warp, where they will take the two previous frames and analyze those and fake the <sighs> next one. I mean, I'm no scientist. I, that just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> and if it's having problems, it will run 45 frames per second, fake every other frame to bring it up to a full 90. Okay. And apparently this works really, really well. Uh, like I said, like the shit that's going on behind... All of this and the way that Oculus is thinking about it, like they are really doing their homework. I was extremely impressed. I watched it just because I was like, I should probably watch this thing. Uh, VR is now here. Like PSVR is coming out next week. I should probably just kind of, you know, put some time. We're doing a podcast tomorrow. I might want to talk about some of the games I see. Um, I am seriously impressed by the way that they are approaching it. Uh, they are doing so much more work than um, Steam or PlayStation. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, which, you know, Mark Zuckerberg probably isn't doing much else, you know. Uh, he's got a lot of money and a lot of time on his hands. But right. they, like, they're really going for it. And I'm and I'm very impressed. Um, and I don't know. I, I think uh, they're partnering with Microsoft. Yeah, they've said that VR will be coming with Scorpio which will be the next Xbox coming out fall next year. Okay, yeah. Um, um, I don't know if I'll be getting a Scorpio, but... Uh, I know my, I will. The question is, is do I want to get the VR for it? Uh, my, in my week-to-week -week, uh, waffling on uh, which system I'm getting next, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm back to uh, leaning Xbox at this point um, for a number of different reasons. But last night, uh, yeah... Oculus might be the way to go with this. 
Uh, I don't want to be an early adopter either because we have some time. Um, it sounds like in five years their plans are to have this completely overhauled. Um, and they're also, you know, they're working on a um, wireless headset too. I heard about that, yeah. Um, so it just seems like if you're going to back a horse, they might be the smartest bet. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost likely that it'll be Oculus will come out with new versions and they won't have any problem saying this is the new version of Oculus. And then, I don't know, with Vive, it's like, are they selling enough of those to keep doing that? With PSVR, I can see it that they're going to be afraid to introduce a new one yeah. until maybe two years after. Uh, I, if, I'd say about two years. Or if it's it, successful. It, it le- yeah, they're waiting to see how well it does, which I think it'll do fine. Um, I, I mean, it will it will satisfy their user base, I think. I'm, I, the only thing I'm worried Ollie about... Ollie seems PS- to think differently. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about with PSVR is, is it going to become a Vita? Are they going to drop it after that is, two years? I think what most people who are following this are afraid of. Yeah. And I, I want to play those games, but I don't want to spend that money because those aren't fully realized games. They aren't worth the... I mean, like I said, Batman is only about 45 minutes long, and it's it's $20. At least they're not trying to charge $60. There are $60 uh, PSVR games. Hey, it's, it's a timed exclusive, so uh, you know maybe you just don't buy it at all and eventually play it. I might play it on the Scorpio next <laughs> year with my Oculus. Yeah. I... I really do want to play Res. Yeah. I want That'll to play, be like the I fourth time I bought Res. Res in VR. <laughs> uh, as someone who's never played Res. Oh, I love Res. I've always wanted to. Um, I've played a lot of video games, but we're talking about a lot of the ones uh, that I haven't played So today. I mean, that's what this show's really about. It's about our impressions, about talking about stuff. Not necessarily... These aren't reviews. No. We're just saying... If anyone was on the fence about these kind of things, this is how we feel. It's, you know, we're, we're just another video game podcast. You it know? Just, yeah, you know what? You come here to get just another uh, point VR of view. talk. Point of view, I guess. <laughs> um, one last thing about uh, the Oculus uh, uh, keynote. Um, at the very beginning, they showed a, uh, a graph, just a, you know, curving. God damn it, what is. So at the very beginning, they they showed a graph about kind of their timeline, about where they think this is going. Um, And at the top, about 10 to 15 years of this graph, there was just a little pair of eyeglasses. Right. And I went, what the hell are those glasses? Because he was talking about the future of the technology and where they want to go with it. Is and this that, was this was when Zuckerberg was talking. Is that before or after the singularity? Uh, I would assume uh, after. Right. Um, uh, but he did not. Uh, he did not acknowledge that there were glasses on this graph. He did not <laughs> mention what that might be. They were there for but a moment. Yeah. Uh, about like about a minute, I think that, or maybe thirty seconds. That was up. But uh, I did not hear anything else he had to say because I was just like, what the hell is that? Like, what are those going to be? Like, are they going to announce that they're going to do VR, like, just actual eyeglasses? And, you know, who knows? But that little Easter egg up in the corner, I'm, I'm very curious to, to see what the hell that was supposed to be. And my one last thing about uh, Ready Player One and all of the... There's so many comparisons that it's just interesting that I started reading it at the same time that I'm actually getting interested in VR. It takes place in sort of a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. Where energy, all of the natural energies have been depleted. The world is just ruined. And it's just true escapism. So I'm wondering, are we going to... In that time when we have those things, are we going to get to a point where we realize we can't actually leave this planet? We do the Mars traveling and realize that we can't do anything with it. We're stuck here. That we're fucked. So everyone just wants to live out the, the rest of their days in a virtual world. So it's we, really we're gonna, dark. So we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> matrix ourselves, basically. It seems like yeah, we're willingly we're gonna willingly go and matrix ourselves. We're just not gonna you know 
we're not going to be of use to anything. Yeah. Well, they even have, if you look at the, the Taco Bell commercial for PSVR, they have a guy coming back from the future saying that, that uh, everyone was playing VR and they weren't paying attention and aliens came and destroyed our planet. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's kind that's, of where we're going. Not that, necessarily the alien thing, but if this keeps going like this, everyone's just going to be... It would be funny if it weren't so scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we always like to end this on a... On a high note. On um, just a good old gut chuckle. Video games are fun. It's it's a relaxing thing. And Aren't this is they? just an interesting thing. Aren't they? I seem to be just stressed out day to day waiting for the NX. Oh yeah, <laughs> these are great. Alright, I think that's going to wrap it up. Yeah, no, that's good. We, we ended on the, uh, the big thing of the week, I think. Yeah. This has been Just Another Video Game Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter... At which is now J A V G podcast, easy enough to remember, right? J A V G. J A V G. Just well, yeah, another video game podcast. The, the letters on our. Um... If you look on the icon for iTunes, it yeah, says yeah. it on there. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter. If you want to email us, you can e- email us at just another video game podcast at gmail dot com. If you got any questions, comments, say that we don't know what we're talking about. I can't wait till we get our first email. Yeah, if we get if we get emails, we get questions. We'll definitely talk about them on the show. That's for sure. Yeah, who we'll just get the one guy he writes in every week and just have a conversation with him through an email. I well, don't know. I got a comment on the last video review I did, which I'll admit I kind of have to ask. I wanted to get some video content on there. I, I, I won't do that again. But the guy was basically like, I like the format, but you really should have done a better job. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll keep that in mind Thank going you know, forward. Hey, you know what? The best you can hope for is that people keep you honest. Yeah, he, he watched it, apparently, and he felt the need to comment, as opposed to just giving it a thumbs down and moving on. Okay. Calling me a cuck or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the new the new internet burn, I guess. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, you know, I don't... I mean, I'm. this has been Jeremy. Now I have a co-host, Brian. I don't, I, I don't I, feel like I need to thank you for coming on anymore. The, no. It's just uh, a normal hey, thing now. Thanks for... Uh, for them for coming on and, and listening. Yeah. And like I said, send thanks us some for, comments and some questions. And thanks for Oliver for coming on and just kind of rolling around on the floor. Yeah, messing with the cables. Hopefully that didn't screw anything up. Yeah, he's, he wasn't as talkative. He's usually a very loud and opinionated little butthole. But uh, he, he kept it quiet. I'm proud of him. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next time. 